Hi guys, my name is Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my 25 week pregnancy update, as well as revealing the name that we have picked out for our little boy. So I'm super excited about today's video and let's just get right into it. This little boy is about the size of an acorn squash now, which seems so big to me. It's so crazy that he's growing so fast and this pregnancy seems to just be going by so much faster than Sophia's, probably because I'm occupied with Sophia, but I've just been trying to soak in every little moment of it because I know how fast it's going by and I know that in a way it's a lot easier when they're inside and they're just completely taken care of and I'm so looking forward to seeing him but I'm also just enjoying him being inside. I now weigh 176 pounds so I've gained about 36 pounds because I started off at 140. So that seems like a total normal weight gain for me. I've just been eating when I'm hungry and eating as healthy as I possibly can and I don't feel like I'm gaining too fast. I've always been incredibly skinny so I'm just totally fine with having a little bit of extra body fat for breastfeeding after he's born. So now let's talk about what we're going to name him. This name has been on Luke's boy name list for years and years and I'm more picky about girl names for sure and but I knew that he really loved this name and so we decided that this was what we were going to name our first son, but it's Demetrius Alexander. And I think that just sounds so unique and so cool and Demetrius and Sophia go so well together, I think. Plus Demetrius makes a super cute nickname. We can call him Dimitri and that's just so cute. It's very unique, it's, it's different, it's not a name you hear every day. We really love unique names. We didn't want to pick something that is like super common. We're both really excited about the name that we've given him. We also have a name picked out for if we do have a boy again that like goes along with it really well which I'm not going to tell you guys yet because that could be a ways down the road. So anyway he's been still very very low down there and it's just a total different experience this pregnancy has been from Sophia's pregnancy because she was sitting pretty high and I, I mean it pushed on my lungs a bit but it wasn't putting so much pressure on my pelvic floor and then also I've been realizing lately that I have a weak pelvic floor from Sophia's pregnancy and then also getting pregnant again so soon. It takes nine months to grow the baby and it also takes nine months to totally heal so I got pregnant around six months postpartum. So just the fact that I wasn't able to have a full nine months just for my body to heal, I totally understand why I'm having these issues but like when I sneeze or cough, unless I cross my legs, I pee a little bit and it's a little bit annoying and a little bit funny. I don't mind super much, I just know that it's because of a bigger issue of a weak pelvic floor. And then also it's just been very, very swollen because it's weak down there and he's sitting so low. I've been very swollen and very uncomfortable. So I've started doing some exercises for it and I'm just trying to take it easy and you know, do my exercises every day and take all my supplements and everything so that my body has all the nutrients it needs and then I just try to rest more often during the day so if I can tell like it, it feels like there's always pressure there but I can tell like the pressure changes when I, I just need to sit for a little while like I need to stop walking around and standing I just need to sit and put my feet up it's best if I can lay down but if Sophia is awake then she climbs all over me and it's uncomfortable so if I can at least sit for a little while I've been trying to do that just rest more often. Occasionally he does come up from the bottom of my uterus <laughs> and it's such a weird feeling because I can, like I can feel him come up and then like because he's never been up high my lungs don't even know what to do with the pressure and it's like I can't even breathe for a minute or two while my body's like adjusting to having him up where he should be. It's like such a strange thing but usually he's not up there for very long and he goes right back down there and but it's just kind of funny to feel him like go back and forth and he just really prefers being down there. So I guess he's, maybe he's just excited to come out. I have no idea why he wants to be down there, but it's, it's a little more uncomfortable than, than I would prefer. I can feel him way more often and it's just the best feeling ever. This is like one of my favorite parts of pregnancy is feeling the baby kick. Even if he's sleeping, he's big enough that I can actually feel where he is and feel his head back and it's just so much fun and then when he kicks he's like he kicks hard and he jumps around and it's so much fun to especially when Luke's able to feel him too he's pretty sneaky and he'll be like jumping around like crazy and then me or Luke will put our hand on my belly to try to feel from the outside and he'll stop 
and it'll like take a while for him to start doing it again. It's really funny. At night, he is so much more active, especially when I first lay down for the night. He is just bouncing off the walls. It is insane. But it's so much fun to lay there and just feel him and put my hand on my belly and I feel like it's just a really special time between just the two of us. My nose has been so stuffy. It's like I've had a cold for like the last two or three months. And I have this slightly with Sophia's pregnancy. I don't know if I talked about this in a previous update, but this is a total pregnancy thing. At first I thought it was a cold, but then it lasted for so long and I remembered that I had this like a little bit with Sophia's pregnancy. So I'm pretty sure it's just from pregnancy. But it feels like I have a cold. My nose is always stuffy, especially at night. It gets completely clogged. And I've never been someone who deals with allergies like ever. And I rarely get colds because I just try to keep myself really healthy and eat healthy and take all my elderberry syrup and just all the things. So having a stuffy nose at night is very weird for me. And I've had it so infrequently that I don't know how to sleep with my mouth open. It's so weird. I'll wake up completely panicked because I can't breathe because I closed my mouth in my sleep and I apparently can't open it back up while I'm asleep. I, I have to like go to sleep like with my head propped in a certain way so that my jaw like stays open. It's like the most ridiculous thing. And then also because I'm constantly breathing through my mouth because my nose is plugged up and it's winter, it's incredibly dry in here. My lips are really chapped so I've been putting lip balm on every night. The backs of my hands are really dry which I've never had that happen even in the winter when it's really cold. Pretty sure that's a pregnancy thing too because I've never had dry hands. So I've just been putting lotion on my hands and putting lip balm on every night and it does help a lot. I've been trying to drink a lot of water because I know that'll help with my chapped lips too. But because of that and then because he's so low and I'm just pretty uncomfortable, I've been starting to have a little bit harder of a time sleeping. So I was hoping it would take a little longer into my pregnancy before I had a hard time sleeping. I really need to get another pregnancy pillow. My last one kind of got ruined when Sophia was born and got blood on it during uh, her birth. So. I need to just invest in a new pregnancy pillow because that was such a lifesaver during her pregnancy. Because sleep is important. I get so cranky when I don't get enough sleep. I have noticed that I can sleep pretty decently through the night if I fall asleep right away. Like, I can't look at my phone, I can't lay there and think about stuff for a while. Like, I need to lay down and try to fall asleep right away. Because if I can fall asleep right away, then I seem to sleep really good through the entire night. But if it takes me more than just a little while, I like have a terrible night and I have to get up and pee constantly and it's just craziness. I don't know why that is, but so I've been trying to go to bed early-ish and avoid looking at my phone, just go to sleep right away, which is hard for me because I'm a night owl, but I'm having to fight that tendency because I have to get up early with Sophia, so I need my sleep. I've also been having the worst dreams about breastfeeding. I already get super vivid dreams during pregnancy. I have a ton of dreams about how the labor is going to go, but this time around I've mostly been having breastfeeding dreams just because of how Sophia's breastfeeding ended. It wasn't like when I wanted to. I wanted to breastfeed her through a year, but I had to stop when she was around seven months because of this little man. I got pregnant and my milk dried up. So even though I know it's totally ridiculous that I would be afraid that I can't breastfeed, I'm just scared to death and I'm having the worst dreams and then after having a dream I'm upset about it the whole next day and it's just it's just crazy. I just have to keep reminding myself that I was able to feed Sophia exclusively exclusively breastfeed her until she was seven months old, until I got pregnant, and that there was like a really valid reason that my milk dried up and I did everything I could after I knew I was pregnant and I I did everything I could to bring my milk supply back up, but my body just didn't want to do both at once. But up until then, she had plenty of milk. She was super healthy and chubby and growing properly, and so I know technically that my body can't produce enough milk. It's just really hard for me, pregnant, worrying mom, to not stress out about it. So my plan is to just do exactly what I did with her and do one side nursing, but then in the beginning, especially when I have a lot of milk, use the Hakka. On one side, I want to use it more with Demetrius because I want to get a bigger freezer stash of breast milk. So I'm just going to do the same thing and just try my best not to worry about it because I know that worrying really isn't helpful to having a good milk supply. Sometimes worrying about not having enough can make you not have enough. So I just really need to trust God and trust that my body will do what it's supposed to do. I've been doing a ton of prep for the new baby and I'm nesting like crazy. I've been canning a ton of meals and freezing a ton of meals. 
What I like to do is if I'm making something that can freeze easily, I make a double batch. I put half of it in a Ziploc bag, a gallon Ziploc bag in the freezer. I label it and it's ready to go to just heat up when the baby's born. And then I've also been canning meals. I've canned about four quarts of chili and a ton of bone broth. I like to have bone broth on hand for after the baby's born. I remember it helped so much when Sophia was first born and I was like so weak from losing so much blood and bone broth was like the secret ingredient to feeling better again. I've also canned 32 pints of kidney beans so far and I'm planning on doing some other kinds of beans to just have with chili and just to have an easy like thing to add into a meal. I'm planning on doing some different meat sauces that I can use over noodles or rice or quinoa. I'm also going to try to do some different soups. So last time I was pretty prepared but not prepared enough and then this time around with having a toddler at the same time as a newborn, I want to be way more prepared. Like I want to be able to just be in bed for like the first week because I know how important postpartum healing is. I know that my body, especially with back-to-back -back pregnancies, is going to need some time to heal and I really feel like in our culture we don't take postpartum healing seriously enough. Like it's a huge wound on the inside of your uterus where your placenta detached and it needs time to heal and you've just given birth like Especially since we want to have a lot of kids, I need to make sure that every time I take really good care of my body so that I'm able to have a lot of kids. So yeah, doing a ton of prep. I've been kind of feeling rushed because of how much pelvic floor problems I've been having. I kind of know that even though I'm only a little over halfway through my pregnancy, I'm coming near to an end of being able to do so much work during the day just because I know my body's gonna need to rest and I'm probably gonna have to start taking it easier sooner than I did with Sophia's pregnancy and just not overdo it. So I'm trying to hurry and get all this stuff done now so that as I get further along, I can you know, take it a little easier. So I've just been more tired and emotional than lately, partly because I've been like, really busting my butt just to get stuff done. Film a bunch of videos, I'm trying to get stocked up on videos so that I can take some time off after the baby's born and only film like baby and postpartum updates for a little while, maybe some vlogs. Sophia's been teething really bad and having ear infections from her teething. The ear infection just keeps coming back and she's been having really bad diaper rashes from teething and so it's been harder for me to cope with Sophia just being such a handful during the day and it's harder for me not to start to feel just down about it and start to get depressed. She's also not been eating very well either so I've been feeling a little bit down about that, but it's just easier for me to like feel really happy about things in pregnancy. Like my emotions are just like all over the place. It's easier for me to feel happy. It's easier for me to feel sad. So I just need to remind myself that Sophia goes through phases and I can't let it affect my entire mood for the whole day. But even though it's uncomfortable a lot and it's definitely harder than Sophia's pregnancy was, I still absolutely love being pregnant. I'm so thankful that I'm able to be pregnant and have children. This is what I've always wanted and God has been so good to us with blessing us with two children already and I'm not even 21 years old yet, so I'm just feeling so thankful. So now let's show you guys the bump. So here's the bump. And I'm wearing my really nice maternity leggings. I've been like living in these leggings lately. It's definitely bigger and I'm definitely pretty low and like all up here is squishy still, and I feel him like a rock down here. Like right here is really firm. I can feel him sitting here. Even though there's all this room up here, it seems like it would be more comfortable for both of us, but my belly button is really starting to stick out. I can like see it stick out through my shirt now, which is really funny. The other side, I've been starting to put some belly cream on just in anticipation of how itchy my stomach got with Sophia. I have stretch marks. I already got the stretch marks so I'm not putting cream on to avoid them but it got really stretched out and dry and itchy so I'm trying to start to put it on sooner in hopes that it'll help it not get as itchy. So yeah you can see <laughs> you can see my belly button through my shirt. So funny. So that's all for this pregnancy update. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!